But uh, the youngest delegate, we thought Sarah Blair had that title forever, mm -hmm. but somehow Josh uh, wrestled that title away when he was elected to the House of Delegates as the youngest delegate ever. Uh, Josh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. So good to be on the show again. That voice is so deep and mature. How old are you, Josh? <laughs> I'm 27 now. 27, you know, but the voice belies an older person, <laughs> somebody of authority. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a face made for radio, so uh, right. it, it works out pretty well. Too. <laughs> Handsome young man, Josh. What are you talking about? <laughs> Appreciate that. Hey, let's uh, let's talk agriculture in the state of West Virginia and why you would like to be the next ag commissioner. Sure, sure. So, yes, I, I'm the Republican running for agriculture commissioner, uh, frankly, for one reason. Uh, in West Virginia, we are an aging state. We are the oldest state in the country. Uh, and that is especially true in farming. Uh, the average farmer in the state of West Virginia is 62 years old. And what happens when they retire? Uh, we have to have more young people going into agriculture. Uh, and the reality is, is, is fewer young people are going into that field uh, now than ever before. Uh, we are seeing great numbers of kids go into FFA and 4-H and all these different organizations when they're growing up, when they're in school. But when they graduate, only a small percentage of them are actually going into agriculture. Uh, so I'm running uh, not only to, to take the helm of the Department of Agriculture, uh, but to encourage other young people to go into that field. And how would you do that, Josh? Sure. So the, the very first thing we have to do is make sure that we're educating people properly. Um, so we need to restore the trades to the school system. Uh, we are grossly underfunding our trade schools in this state. Uh, I, when I was in the legislature, I worked on a bill to get uh, an average of $60 million more dollars for, for trade schools uh, annually in the state, uh, and those would be distributed throughout uh, all 55 counties. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is career and technical education. Uh, so FFA and 4-H, I've already mentioned, uh, but Skills USA, FBLA, DECA, all these other uh, student organizations uh, need additional funding. Uh, at a state level. Uh, and we have such a bloated Department of Education, we absolutely have to get that funding directly to the classroom and to these student organizations. Uh, and then finally, what, you know, we're, we're failing to pass the baton to these kids after we, we send them off of school, after we graduate them. Uh, we need to make sure that they have access to capital through microloans uh, and through uh, uh, better access to actually acquiring land uh, property, property prices have gone so high in the last few years. It's difficult for, for families not only to buy a single family home, uh, a single unit home, but for young people to acquire land in rural areas uh, to become farmers uh, for the first time. Uh, so those are all the issues that we have to tackle. Bill? Yeah. Good morning, Josh. Uh, welcome back here with us a, a few months ago. Uh couple of points uh you mentioned uh the issues that are that are facing the farmers now uh funding and education and the like these more properly fall in the role of a legislator uh why did you step down from the uh from the house of delegates when you actually had some voice in addressing these these issues sure sure so i i ended up moving from putnam county to Kanawha county uh, that was my old legislative district uh, back in 2021. Um, uh, you know, Kanawha County is uh, actually home for me. I was born and raised in, in the Kanawha Valley. Um, and uh, I ended up moving about three miles outside of my district. Uh, found a home that I liked in, in Charleston where I live. And uh, unfortunately, that home was not in my my old district. Uh, and then the, the redistricting process made it difficult to, uh, to, to maintain that. Uh, we, we did everything we could, but it, you know, that, that's the way life is sometimes. But I, I still have a passion for serving the people of West Virginia. I'm very much interested in uh, returning to uh, uh, state government because I think that the job is, is not finished. 
Why didn't you just get a P.O. box uh, like everybody else does, uh, Josh? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I firmly believe in the Constitution, and if it says that you have to live in the area that you're running, in the, in the district or the county where you're running, then uh, I absolutely believe that you should uh, you should legitimately live there and not just uh, – get your mail there <laughs> that, that's one bill <laughs> that's right hey uh joss uh i have not looked at the statistics i've not done my research uh but the incumbent has are, is making the point that the farmers the number of farmers have increased in the last four to eight years uh the income level of the farmers have increased in other words the plight of the farmers is much better than it was before how do you counter these arguments yeah, I'm absolutely countering that because uh, there's a little thing called inflation that we're all experiencing. Of course, farmers' uh, incomes are increasing. Of course they are. Look at the cost of food. But so are their expenses. Don't just look at how much money they're making. Look at the actual profit that they're able to make, which is much, much lower than it was uh, 8, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, the cost of their insurance is up. Uh, the interest rates are up when they go to, to take out a loan. The cost of equipment and fuel and seeds have, have skyrocketed, uh, not to mention the, the cost uh, for farmers to actually take care of themselves and their families. Uh, so their take-home pay is significantly less. And then in, in, in terms of the number of new farmers, uh, what the incumbent is, is not saying is that includes the number of uh, young people who are either inheriting their parents or grandparents' property uh, or, or people who are moving in here and taking over old farms that are, are stagnant. So, yes, there are new farmers coming to West Virginia, but that doesn't mean that those are brand-new farms, first-time farms. Those are just old farms that have sat idle or uh, uh, another generation taking on a uh, family farm. Um, so if, he, if he's including those numbers, then it is drastically less um, than what he's planning. As a quick follow-up, besides the role of a commissioner of agriculture, uh, what do you do besides being an effective amb ambassador? Sure. Well, a lot of it has to do with, uh, with legislating and with federal money. Uh, there's, there's, there's millions of dollars in state and federal grants that the department oversees, uh, whether that be related to agritourism, which is another passion of mine, uh, and then related to uh, uh, these businesses being able to market themselves, like, like farm, um, uh, farmer's markets and uh, 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 you know, other, uh, other farm-related businesses. Um, uh, so being able to effectively administer those grants is something that's going to be critical for this job. Matt Miller. Joshua, uh, you're a young man, and you talked about, you know, younger kids in the high schools that have been involved in the, the FFAs and other programs. Have you had a chance to talk with many of them and, and kind of get firsthand why they are not able to maybe continue in a line and, and start a new farm and stay in farming? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I've spoken to a lot of the FFA groups uh, around the state, uh, especially their instructors, the, 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 the adult advisors who are affiliated with the groups. Um, you know, they have to have a teacher or, or a sponsor uh, for each of the groups. And uh, so I've spoken with a lot of them individually. And uh, um, really and truly, it is that access to land. It's that access to capital. Land is just so expensive. It is incredibly expensive. Uh, everybody in the Eastern Panhandle knows that from firsthand experience. Um, and when these kids graduate, uh, they're often having to deal with uh, the idea of going to college or starting a family, uh, getting a career for the very first time. And those are very formidable challenges. And, and really and truly, buying a plot of land is not always the first thought that they have. Uh, and they usually wait until they're in their late 20s, 30s, or 40s before they even consider it. Um, and, and I already mentioned that the average age of farmer is, is you know, 62 in the state of West Virginia. Uh, but on average, they've been farming for about 23 years. So in other words, most of the farmers in our state didn't even actually get started until they were 38, 39, 40 years old. 
Um, and, and I understand you have to build credit. You have to take that time to actually be able to afford to buy property. Um, but uh, young people are getting that education, and then they're just waiting 20 or 30 years before they enter the industry. Uh, and that is, that is not uh, conducive to, to what West Virginia needs. When we look at farming in the state of West Virginia, how much of it do you know a breakdown of those that would be considered full time that their their livelihood is the farm and and they're earning their living through that farming as opposed to those that may have say another job and farming is kind of a secondary income? Sure, sure. So a very small percentage of farmers in this state are full time farmers. Uh, you have a lot of folks who are retired, and so they do it as a, a supplement for their income or even as a hobby. Uh, but really and truly, if you want to dive into the careers in agriculture, it's the manufacturing, it's the processing, and it's the distribution. I said this a couple months ago when I was on your show the last time. Uh, West Virginia will never be able to grow as much as Iowa, Ohio, or Indiana. That's just We just don't have the geography for that. But what we can excel at is the processing, distribution, uh, and manufacturing. Uh, and that's where the careers are as well. So while uh, full-time farming might not be an option for most people, what we can do as a state is uh, encourage and try to do those economic development projects to get those, those careers to the mountain state. Um, so a very small percentage of farmers in this state are uh, are full-time and, and are doing that as their only form of income. To have those type of careers that you were just speaking of, would that mean that there would have to be a lot of produce and, and, and other things that would be shipped into West Virginia to then be dealt with, manufactured, shipped out, and that sort of thing? Yeah, you'd absolutely have to. Uh, so for the Higginbotham Farm down here in the Kanawha Valley, uh, you know, we have about 900 acres, uh, 120 longhorn cows, uh, we also grow corn, so about 300 and, uh, 310 acres are corn. Um, right now, we have to truck all of our corn almost to Columbus, Ohio, a two-plus-hour drive, uh, to load onto trains, and then they distribute our grain, our, our corn, to Tyson Chicken, to uh, uh, all these different large companies uh, for, for chicken feed or, or, or what have you for, for canning. Um, and we don't have a single one of those distribution centers in West Virginia, not one. And so we absolutely uh, can become that distribution hub for agriculture products in which the folks from Ohio, the farmers from Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Virginia uh, ship their products here, and we can either uh, can it, we can process it, uh, or we can uh, then distribute it uh, nationwide. We have that ability. Yeah, uh, Joshua, that appears to me to be an economic uh, issue that's driven by the private sector. What role do we as a government have to encourage the development or the implementation of distribution centers? Sure. Well, it, it comes down to infrastructure. It comes down to where the government is spending their money uh, when it comes to uh, 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 you know, the, the money that, that we all pay in taxes. Uh, where are they spending it? Are they giving tax breaks to out-of-state corporations, or are they encouraging uh, private sector development from uh, West Virginia? Uh, and the reality is that, uh, you know, I, I think as a state, we're giving so much money to large corporations from out-of-state that we're not looking at developing entrepreneurship in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I would agree with you that, uh, you know, it is a private sector issue. But when the government is sitting on thousands of acres of land that could otherwise be utilized for manufacturing or for farming, isn't that the government currently interfering in the private sector when we're taking land and not developing it? Uh, and, and that is one of the biggest issues that, that we're looking at from uh, an agricultural standpoint. Okay, we're running out of time. We're about to so kind of sum up the discussion. Uh, we often ask on this station, uh, when someone's running against the incumbent, why are you running to fire the incumbent? I'll ask you that question. Why are you running to fire the current Commission of Agriculture? Sure. Well, I, I will say that I, I think 
the, the current commissioner is a good person. Uh, I've known him for a long time. Uh, I, I don't have any personal uh, issues with him. I like him personally. Um, uh, the, the problem is we're not seeing the results that he's promised. He's been running for this office for 12 years now. He's been in it for eight. He's been running for it um, uh, since 2012, the first time he ran. And we are seeing fewer people go, go into agriculture. We are seeing less overall output from the state. And we're seeing the department sitting on thousands of acres, millions of dollars worth of good land, good properties that could otherwise be used <coughs> for economic development or for agriculture. Um, and, and we're just not seeing the results. Um, so we need more young people involved in the industry, and that's what I'm going to bring. So I'm, I think we need to make a change. Josh, how do we find out more about your campaign for Ag Commissioner? Sure. Uh, folks can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or X, uh, or LinkedIn. So they just go to Hickenbotham, the number four, WV, and they can find me on social media. Uh, and reach out to me and call me, text me, email me, whatever they need. Uh, I'm, I'm here for them, so I'm very available. Josh, best of luck to you in the upcoming election. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate you having me on.